more kids to learn enough to graduate from high school voluntarily. There's computer software that can model people's behavior from videotapes as well as audio. We modify that software to look at video and audio recordings of every student in a classroom as well as every teacher, all of their utterances and movements. And then what the software does is it matches the students' behaviors as well as things like their Myers-Briggs personality types to particular teachers as well as learning styles and then creates a customized arrangement of what student goes with what teacher as well as what micro peer groups are produced where each student sits, the people that they meet and get along with. Then, as a result of this, the software is able to get people to do or accomplish more of their schoolwork as well as learn more things and retain more things. This causes perhaps 10 or 20 percent more people to graduate from high school. It may be more than that. 10 or 20 percent more people graduating from high school creates a much larger amount of wage earning as well as a credential effect to uh, have wider opportunities. Thus, it actually does benefit the students a great deal as well as the people that believe the students should be learning things. Now, here's why it's voluntary. Fortunately, we live at a society where people have a variety of opinions and the physiological parents of children are able to choose for their children uh, which kinds of schools they would like to go to. Would they like their children to go to a uh, movement and music and attitude centric school, perhaps like a Waldorf school? Would they like their children to go to what's called an honors school? with very high academic standards? Would they like their kids to go to a science magnet school? Would they like their kids to go to a school with a strong emphasis on uh, other things? Would they like their kids to go to a school where the kids spend all their time outdoors, outdoor school? Now, looking at kind of regular, ordinary, schools, as well as these uh, exciting voluntary opportunities, people could be given the opportunity to have uh, their kids monitored and then structured. And the kids could opt out of this at any time once they were at, uh, say, age 11. That way, the ability to match kids to the right teachers as well as they're most uh, likely to do well at school surrounding peer groups where they sit would be a part of the items that were available and its, could, its effectiveness and success could be measured and people could stay with the program if they felt like it. And the people who might want to do this are people that recognize that going to high school graduating from high school and going to college are a value to them as well as their children, as well as to their society. Now, this brings up the question of the social pass. When I was a high school student, the social pass was still part of the construction of education. Now, I think that any course that's an elective course that the student takes on their own they should have the option to choose the social pass option. That's because it seems very strange to me that a person taking swimming or art or print shop should somehow jeopardize their entire future if they don't do well at that course. So even though there's certainly a likelihood that they would be uh, perhaps less of an artist or a print shop person, uh, if they were given the ability to have a social pass. I think those students should be given the about ability to have a social pass if it would affect their ability to graduate from high school.